In the previous video, we used thin wall cylinder theory in order to evaluate the principal stresses acting on a cylinder. Now, if you recall, in that video, we said thin wall theory applies when the value of T over D, down here in the bottom left hand corner, is less than 0.05. Well, for our values of T and D, we found that T over D was exactly 0.05. And we're using both thin and thick walled theories in order to compare the answers that we get using each of those theories. So this time we have exactly the same problem. We have a pressure of 11.5 megapascals. We have an outside diameter of 84 millimeters and an inside diameter of 76 millimeters, giving us a wall thickness of four millimeters. Now, when we evaluate a cylinder using thick walled theory, we have three different stresses acting. In the previous video, we spoke about the longitudinal stress, which tends to stretch the cylinder in this direction. We talked about the circumferential stress, which aims to separate the cylinder in this direction. And our third stress is called the radial stress, which acts in this direction here through the cylinder wall. So in this video, we're going to calculate the longitudinal stress we're going to calculate the circumferential stress both on the inside and outside walls of the cylinder and we're also going to calculate the radial stress on the inside and outside walls of our cylinder too. From there we can determine the principal stress and we can also compare that to the stress that we obtained using thin wall theory. The first stress then is the longitudinal stress and the formula for longitudinal stress is in the top right hand corner. We have PI Ri squared minus PO RO squared all over RO squared minus RI squared. First of all, a note about PI and PO. PI is our inside cylinder pressure, PO is our outside pressure. Now, if we assume that the pressure given here is gauge, gauge pressure is referenced against atmospheric pressure. So if we use gauge pressure, then the pressure outside of our cylinder is going to be zero. This term here on the right hand side disappears. Now just take care here because conversely, if a pressure was being applied outside of the cylinder, then we would have a value of PO. So we need to take care here. If it's pressurized internally and the pressure is specified in gauge, then we can ignore PO. If the pressure's being applied outside, then we need to include that term PO. If we had a pressure outside rather than a pressure inside, then our longitudinal stress value would actually come out to be negative. Negative meaning the cylinder was being compressed rather than stretched. So if we're pressurizing on the inside, the longitudinal stress will be positive. If we're pressurizing on the outside, then the longitudinal stress will be negative. Okay, the next thing we notice from our formula is that we require the inside radius and the outside radius rather than the diameters. So let's clear a little space in the bottom left hand corner and then determine our inside and outside radiuses in meters. Okay, so our outside diameter is 84 millimeters. Therefore, our outside radius, we'll call it RO for consistency. Our outside radius is going to be half the diameter, so 42 millimeters, expressed in meters is 0.042 meters. Our inside radius is half the inside diameter, which is 38 millimeters, or expressed in meters, 0.038 meters. So now we have everything we need to calculate our longitudinal stress. We have P inside, 11.5 megapascals. Times the inside radius squared. Well, our inside radius is 0.038 squared. All divided by RO squared, 0.042 squared, minus RI squared, 0.03. 8 squared. Note that it's all of the top divided by all of the bottom there, giving us a longitudinal stress equal to 
51.89 megapascals. Now note that when thin wall theory was used, the stress came out as 57.5 megapascals. So they're of the same order of magnitude, but when we're using thick wall theory, that value is a little bit lower. Okay, now in order to calculate our remaining two stresses, our circumferential stress and our radial stress, we can introduce a new parameter that we're going to call B. Note that alongside our longitudinal stress, I've marked that also as a parameter called A, and now we're going to calculate a new parameter called B. And then when we come on to calculate the circumferential and radial stresses, you'll see where this fits in. So our value B then is Ri squared, 0.038 squared, times Ro squared, so times 0.042 squared, times PO minus PI. Now note this time that PI is the pressure being subtracted. What we need to multiply by here is actually minus 11.5 megapascals. As you'll see this time, this parameter B actually comes out to be a negative value. Once again, if the pressure was being applied on the outside, then B would be a positive value. But here we have the pressure on the inside, so B is negative. We're dividing by RO squared, 0 0.042 squared, minus RI squared, 0 0.038 squared. Giving us a value of B equal to minus 9154 zero point six accurate to one decimal place. Now I'm not going to assign any units to this because we're just using it as an intermediate parameter here. But let's make a note of our values of sigma L, which is also our parameter A, and our parameter B over on the left hand side, and then we'll continue our calculations for circumferential and radial stress. Okay. So now we have displayed the formulas for calculating our circumferential stress and our radial stress. Now you'll note here that our parameters A and B are included in these formulas. So by first calculating our longitudinal stress, which is the parameter A, and also calculating this additional parameter B, we can make our calculation of these two stresses much more straightforward. Now we're going to calculate these two stresses on both the inside and the outside surfaces. And this will provide us with points of comparison. So first of all then, we're going to calculate our circumferential stress on our inside surface. We have our value of A, 51.89 times 10 to the 6. minus b over r squared. Now take care here because we have minus a minus, which would actually result in a plus. 91540.6. Now because we're working to the inside, the radius that we need to use is the inside radius. So here we have divided by the inside radius, 0 0.038 squared giving us a circumferential stress on the inside of our cylinder equal to 115.28 megapascals. We have once again 51.89 times 10 to the 6 minus minus 91540.6. This time the radius we need to use is the outside radius. Giving us a circumferential stress on the outside surface equal to 103.78 megapascals.
Okay, so at the moment our maximum stress is the circumferential stress on the inside surface at 115.28 megapascals. Let's continue then and calculate our radial stresses. First of all, we have our radial stress on the inside. We have our value of A, 51.89 times 10 to the 6. This time we're adding 91540.6 over the inside radius squared, 0.038 squared, giving us a radial stress on the inside surface equal to minus 11.50 megapascals. Note that this is the same magnitude but the opposite sign to the internal pressure. So it's compressive rather than tensile. And finally we have our radial stress on the outside then. Once again 51.89 times 10 to the 6 plus our parameter B minus 91540.6 this time divided by our outside radius. 0.042 squared, giving us a radial stress on the outside equal to 0.00 megapascals. So the radial stress on the outside is zero. The radial stress on the inside is the same magnitude but the opposite sign to the internal pressure. And we also note here that our maximum circumferential stress is on the inside surface of our cylinder. We note a value of 115.28 megapascals. So our principal stress then is 115.3 megapascals. And if you recall, when we used thin walled theory, the principal stress was 115 megapascals. So because we're at this threshold value of T over D, or on the boundary of where we should use thin and thick walled theory, the results that we've obtained are very similar. Anyway, I hope you found this video series useful and thanks for listening.